Russia has begun a full-scale invasion of Ukraine after weeks of preparing a military posture. Members of the Ukrainian-Canadian community expressed their thoughts on this ever-evolving situation. This interview was conducted on February 25th, 2022. Yeah, so I am um, Bogdana. I come from Ukraine. I immigrated to Canada um, almost four years ago. I came to study at the University of Manitoba um, and I graduated with a master's degree. Um, and after that, I stayed in Canada to, uh, to work. Um, so I'm here uh, and I have family in Ukraine. Uh, my mother, my auntie and grandmother are uh, living in Lviv, which is Western part of Ukraine, close to Polish border. Just from your perspective and what you've um, heard from your friends and uh, a family, can you just share uh, what you're hearing going on over there? I mean, we see what's in the news, but what, what are you hearing? Well, um, I subscribed to the Ukrainian Armed Forces official web page and official Facebook page because they provide like up to date, most recent updates on combats and stuff. And they are showing pictures of people, and I hear it from my friends, long lines at the military bases of those volunteer uh, men who would like to join the army. It's like this was very much actually expected. Because Ukrainians tend to uh, fight for their land, and uh, Ukrainians have been fighting for the independence for centuries, and they won't give up now. This is not the time to give up. Um, and while my family, they are staying home, they don't plan to uh, move anywhere because there are no military actions going on um, in the nearest, I would say, 400, 500 kilometers. So there are no military, nothing. Yes, they have they bombed military airports early morning on February 24th and military bases but they don't touch the civilians and there are no kind of russian tanks no russian army uh, moving towards Lviv and towards western ukraine they are all concentrated in the central part and eastern part um so uh, my family they don't panic nobody panics they do whatever they can they um, gather medication they gather whatever might be needed for those injured to and uh, prepare like spaces and uh, like schools for to accept the refugees and displaced people from the eastern parts. So they donate like beds and pillows and sheets and food uh, just to be to be ready for for the refugees. So everybody does whatever they can in where they are, mm -hmm. um, but. My friends, they, I have a lot of friends, even from Germany and from Sweden and obviously in Canada. So they all express their concerns. They, um, they are scared. They, they get in touch with me. They ask how they can help. So people are asking, people are concerned and I can, I can see the support of the world that comes from my friends. and. Um, my friends from Ukraine, they are all those who are men. They they are considering going to mm -hmm. joining the army and um, or at least like if not joining the armed forces, just joining the kind of local defense forces because each city now has like local defense forces, which involves even like civilians can join um, and they are given weapons. Uh, so they consider that, but nobody runs away. Nobody escapes. Just the rhetor rhetoric and propaganda that's coming out of Moscow right now, it's just this is insane. It's crazy. I guess for, for yourself, what are your thoughts when, you know, we're seeing people on like the extreme right uh, in Western countries that are in support of what Russia is doing? I am very much surprised that this propaganda is active here. And um, I myself didn't experience it in Canada, but a friend of mine who is Ukrainian, she is my coworker. Her daughter experienced it at school, experienced that at school from a teacher, and I was very much surprised. So um, at the day 
when yesterday when Russia invaded, so her daughter went to school and then the teacher kind of questioned her like what's going on and and you know other stuff, and they asked they said like the teacher said, well there are like fifty percent Russians so that's no wonder why they are doing that. So she burst into tears and she went home. But I'm just surprised that there are like educated people here who believe in propaganda. This is insane, honestly. Like well, pe while people have access to reliable sources, to reliable information, reliable data, they still kind of, they still look back at what, what Russians say. There is nothing else besides lies in, in what Putin says and what Russian sources provide. What are your thoughts and feelings when we're seeing thousands of Russians protesting against this uh, this war out, out in Moscow and other Russian cities? Because, you know, Russia doesn't have yeah. freedom of speech. So these people, they're going to be detained, if not worse. Well, I feel thankful for them. And uh, these are their people who went to die. So they are basically protecting their people as well. It was like mothers don't want to lose their sons anyway. This is the war started by the higher, uh, higher government. So this is like those Russian young boys, young men who are now in Ukraine. They are basically fighting for, for the personal interests of Putin or whoever stands behind him, you know. And uh, so like. Why would Russians be want to be involved in the war? They are not. They don't have personal interest in. They, like Russia, has been in wars for the last twenty years. How many, how many young population? How many young people died? There is like Russia. Russia comes to the point. I think Russian society comes to the point when they need to say like this is enough. Why do we have to be involved in wars for all of, all of those years? Why do we have to, uh, why do our people have to sacrifice their lives? So, um, yes, they are not used to protesting. They have been silent for years and just allowing the government do whatever, whatever they want. But I think this is coming to the point when Russia has to say no, when they are saying no, even though some people are being arrested, but this is in their own interest as well. Uh, we're seeing san sanctions coming out from the Western nations as well as the G7 nations. Do you think these yeah. sanctions are enough? Should we be doing more? What are your thoughts on that? Sanctions should have been implied before it all started. It's like Putin doesn't care about the people and the sanctions will uh, affect the um, the budget, Russian budget, but Putin doesn't care about the people. He will keep increasing taxes to upkeep the army to, uh, and, you know, to, that will serve his own interests, personal interests. So sanctions now alone are not, definitely not enough, not now. They sh it should have been done long, long, long time ago, but today is a little too late for that. And what Ukrainian community in Canada asks and what the Ukrainian Canadian Congress asks is um, close the um, airspace, Ukrainian airspace. Um, and um, they are asking to provide more weapon. They are not asking for to send air, you know, forces, just send soldiers, but they are asking to provide more weapon. Ukrainian soldiers know how to use it just just help with the weapon what can us as the everyday canadian what what can we do to help is there anything any way we can support i think yeah well uh ask the government to uh to provide to provide the weapons to to ukrainian people and um, there are lots of funds ukrainian funds that collect uh, donations for to uh, to upkeep the army and to support the Ukrainian army. Um, so um, uh, a good thing would be like if a Canadian, if any Canadian would donate like five dollars for an army. This is like 
it will support like at least like a bullet for a Ukrainian army to to protect themselves. Is there anything else that you'd like to share to just Canadians or the world now as we're just watching this horrific event unfold? Um, well, yes, this is this is a full scale war and the civilians are being attacked. The civilian uh, the homes, people's homes are being targeted. Uh, just a few hours ago, a Russian missile landed in a in a hospital in Melitopol in in southern Ukraine. Like this is the violation of all of in, international laws, all of the human rights. This is the violation of. Yeah, these are war this crimes. These like, are war crimes. The, the, yes, these are these are terrible war crimes that they, they will never be forgotten and forgiven by the Ukrainians. And they should never be forgotten by the world, too. And the world has to speak up now and to stand up now to stop the further, further escalation into Russian escalation into Europe. I see now that all of the international laws and human rights are being discredited. Yeah, well, thank you for uh, for sharing. It's It must be an incredibly hard time for you and your family. I hope they remain safe. Yeah, I was, yeah, like I stayed up until 3 a.m. Uh, yesterday and like barely slept and then was hyperactive for a whole day. It was like lots of crying, lots of tears. This is my land. This is my people. Like they cannot be treated like that.